Right then, welcome back to the channel. Five things that we learned watching Manchester United's children taking on Wrexham at the Snapdragon in San Diego. First thing, physicality. I thought that was the standout difference in the game. There was tons of opportunity and moments in the game where we saw United being very technical um, and playing some genuinely really high quality football and losing out to just raw physicality. The difference in size of the, the men involved in the game was absolutely vast and it was clear to see that it gave them a massive advantage when it came to corners and set plays and all three goals effectively came from a cross or a set piece. Second best in the 50-50s and the physical duels, as you would probably expect. Didn't win anywhere near enough headers. Anytime United put a cross in the air, in the box, Wrexham just ate it up. It was just not a problem for them. And United's youngsters just seemed featherweight in comparison to the, the Wrexham players, the blokes in the Wrexham team. Um, and you know, a huge equaliser in the game was the, the raw physicality um, that they exhibited. And that people sometimes think when they hear physicality, they think that a team was being dirty. And that wasn't necessarily the case. It's just the pure physicality. What did United have? They had agility, they had speed. Uh, we got in behind a fair few times. We played it real nice. We had real technical ability about us. But sometimes just you just get smashed and bullied. And when you're trying to play up against someone, you're trying to roll them, and they've just got that power to just hold you, hug you, keep you out of doing whatever it is that you're trying to do. It could be a problem. Number two, Hannibal. I thought he'd looked the the best footballer on the park. I thought he had quality in possession. He had um, guile and, and fight out of possession. He was hungry. Wrexham players couldn't really get near him for the most part. He looked... He looked hungry. He had a bit of character about him. He was the most foul player on the pitch by a long way. Uh, didn't really get anything for that. But he looked the closest, probably the closest actually, because I think Alvaro Fernandez, who we're going to talk about in a little bit, they, them two looked like they were both ready for first team football, I thought. Um, he's played all pre season looking quite motivated to me. And uh, there is definitely a, an edge to him. And I like that. I like the edge that he has. I think he's really good. Number three, learning curve. Now, I really like the idea of, of having this sort of test. It's a taste of what competitive men's football is all about by playing teams like this. Um, Academy football, Premier League two, it just plain and simple is not fit for purpose. And it was a real tough test for a lot of them youngsters out there. And a lot of them lads are going to be thinking about or having just been on out on loan. Uh, maybe they had bigger teammates with them when they were on loan, but it shows that physicality can be a huge equaliser in this sort of situation. You know, they'll have learned a lot, I think, there about themselves. Um, they've gained experience. I thought Dan Gore was very unlucky with the, the sending off. Um, I thought Nathan Bishop's collision with, with Mullen was the one that was probably a red card. And it looked like he might have damaged his ribs from watching the replays that we saw inside the stadium. Uh, it turns out he's actually suffered a punctured lung, which is a horrendous injury. Um, and if anyone knows anything about that, because I don't, um, what is the healing time on that? Because I can't imagine that heals very quickly to the point where you're able to push, be physical, even work your cardio to the sort of level that would be required where you're, you know, your lungs strong enough to be able to deal with that. That's a, that's a hell of an injury. So I wish him luck with his recovery on that one. But I get the feeling that is a long road. I get the feeling this is a long climb back from something like a punctured lung. So... That was an unfortunate accident in the way that came about, but I think Dan Gore was unlucky with his sending off because Bishop was the one that probably should have gone, and I think the referee just tried to um, to sort of settle a score, really, and even it up rather than just refereeing the game. I think he got in his own head a little bit with that. Number four, Fernandez breakthrough. So as I said earlier, I think... Um, Hannibal looks the most ready, but uh, Alvaro Fernandez is is right there alongside him as well. And because of the injury to Malasia, um, and because of the fact that if there's any dramas at centre half, we'll probably see Luke Shardy play 
deployed as uh, the auxiliary centre half. There is an opportunity here for him. Now, he was Preston's Young Player of the Year last year. Um, I would think another loan is on the cards for him, to be honest, but maybe he sticks around until Christmas. Maybe he sticks around until Christmas and he gets five, ten minutes here and there. I think that would be very, very beneficial for him. He got the assist for the goal. He was one of the brighter players. He was very mature in his defending. He was very confident when he was in possession, receiving the ball under him, immense pressure a lot of the times, and just cool, calm, collected, getting on with what he needs to do. Has he staked a claim? I mean, you guys let me know in the comments, you know, halfway through this, you know, do you see him? I think he's fortunate in that he hasn't got the level of competition someone like Hannibal has. Hannibal's got Mount and Bruno sort of in his role ahead of him. And he's looking at injuries or a significant amount of time out of form before he's going to get anything with those. So Hannibal's a really strange one. Alvaro Fernandez, I can tell you like, like that, how he gets into the team. So, you know, let me know what you think about that one. He had, a, he had a big spell last year out on loan. Does he go up for a higher level and see if he can replicate it this year? And finally, I touched on this earlier, but more of the same. 34,000 people were in attendance in the stadium there tonight, which is good for Wrexham. And it's good for United. It's good for those youngsters to play in front of a such crowd, especially like the Bishop. After what happened with Mullin, that collision, he was getting the shit booed out of him. As a Manchester United player, you're probably going to have to get used to that level of pressure. It was good. I think this type of test is needed more. I touched on this a lot in my review last night, but I'm going to echo it because I, I firmly believe in it. There is the Johnson's Paint Trophy that puts um, some Premier League teams up against teams from League... I think they're all League 2. League 1 or League 2, at least, anyway. But those teams don't take it serious. They see it as demeaning and they they don't like the idea of like Premier League under-21s, B-teams, under-23s getting involved. Now, obviously, I support a Premier League team, but I am also, as a coach, someone that's interested in player development and trying to develop the best footballers that we possibly can. I think there's room for competition between um, elite Premier League youngsters and the, the bottom levels of the professional game and even the, the top levels of the non-league game, which are essentially the fifth professional league anyway. I think most people would be stunned at the level. Wrexham are, for all intents and purposes, a, a National League side right there that they put up against. So that's a National League side. It's a good National League side, but it's a National League side. That is technically semi-pro. In reality, they're all pro. And there's a lot of teams at that level that are pro by that time. But it is technically non-league. Um, I think people will be stunned at just how good that level is. And just because you're a, a 17, 18, 19, 20 year old youngster at United, non-league is not above your station. We've got a United player that's coming and signing on for us at Paddock, or an ex-United player that's coming and signing on for us at Paddock that didn't make it in the first team at United. And he probably doesn't start. And he is not long out of the professional game. I don't think people fully understand just how good non-league is and how good players have to be to, to make it in the Premier League. And I, I want there to be more of this sort of level of competition because academy teams playing academy teams playing the same fucking blueprint whether you're Wolves or Stoke or City or Liverpool no one's bringing any flavour to the table and that's what Wrexham brought they brought flavour and they beat United by just a bit of old rough and tumble absolute non-league 101 but it worked and he got the win but anyway I am tired it's time for me to go to bed. Cheers for tuning in, as always. Shout out to everybody that we saw at the tailgate. Lovely to meet you all. Shout out to the amount of paddock shirts that I have seen as well. It's been absolutely brilliant seeing how many people uh, are out there representing paddock. Um, I'm, I'm genuinely humbled by the support that we've had uh, for our little football team um, and seeing it out here. Um, I will be in Vegas, so we, there's still a chance for us to go um, do a meet-up or hang out or whatever we're going to do. Hopefully there's something on the day of the game as well in, in Vegas, ahead of the Dortmund game. And I am looking forward to it.
But um, cheers for tuning in. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And I'll see you in the next one. Laters. Hey, thank you for watching the video. If you are new around these parts, then don't forget to subscribe. My channel is proudly supported by my community on Patreon. If you'd like to get a little bit of extra content, a Discord group, meetups, five-a-side games, weekly podcasts, behind the scenes, and even an occasional bit of transfer news as and when I get it, then for the price of a pint, you can show your appreciation for the content that we make and get some goodies for doing so as well. Check the link in the description or click the button right here. You'll also find all of my socials here too if you want to follow me on any of those platforms. Nice one.